Your annual meeting has as a theme uh, of capital markets. Tell us what the biggest challenges, maybe even risks for capital markets are as we go into 2020. Well, first of all, thank you for being here and thank you for participating as well with uh, Mark Mobius later. We, we really look forward to it. So what we try and do with this conference is bring together all the different parts of the types of members who are members of SIPMA, which runs the full gamut of the capital markets business. So we have buy side, sell side, institutional, retail, and the program we put together really looks at all those different things. So we have regulators like Jay Clayton from the SEC, uh, who was speaking, John Williams from the New York York Fed. We had Don Stump, uh, Commissioner of the CFTC, uh, yesterday. Uh, but then we have discussions with industry leaders around the retail brokerage, wealth management side, uh, institutional capital markets, and really looking at the array of issues, both regulatory and business, that uh, that uh, member market participants are facing. How do you make a determination of what issues you're looking at? Because you have your normal issues like Dodd, Frank, Volcker, right. Rule, things like that. But then we're going to an election year, and we're hearing quite a few things from the debate stage and the Democrat side that could really fundamentally affect your business. How do you take those into account? Well, uh, you know, the regulatory stuff kind of, you know, we're a highly regulated industry. We were before Dodd-Frank, we will be after Dodd-Frank. And so those issues kind of keep coming and they and they bubble up to the top. And then we have issues coming from Europe, like MIFID II, that we're having to address. And then we have changes in the industry. I think on the political issues, you know, we're those are starting to seep in a little bit. But I think that's probably something we'll look at as we go into the next year. But it's certainly a, a topic of conversation. You mentioned MIFID II. Where are we on that? We've gotten now an extension, basically, on complying with the European rules. Uh, where are we on that? Well, it's a, it's a good question. Actually, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Chairman Clayton about that later today. We're very appreciative that the SEC did give the no action extension of the no action relief, but there needs to be an end game as it relates to research. And in addition, uh, when I've been in Europe recently, uh, and actually repeatedly over a couple of uh, years, uh, folks in Brussels have talked about that they want to go back and take a look at MIFID II, not just the research issue, but some of the other trading issues around it. Now, when will that happen? Who knows? You know, we could be we could be talking about this five years from now and it still hadn't happened. But I think there's still an end game to happen at some point. As you gather here uh, and talk about the various issues specifically related to the securities industry, how do you take into account the larger issues, such as, for example, trade, whether it's U.S.-China trade or uh, USMCA, uh, things like uh, monetary policy. We saw President right. Trump meeting with uh, Jay Powell yesterday. How do you take that into account for your industry? Well, it's, it's a good question. We had uh, Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina yesterday and we talked a little bit about the uh, USMCA, the NAFTA 2.0, which we strongly support and is, I think, an important piece of, of, of legislation, trade legislation. We're hopeful Congress can get that done because, while it's not specific to financial services in all respects, it is in some, but also has broader economic impacts that impact the market. So we'd like to see that done. Likewise, on China, you know, we've been working for many years to gain better market access for U.S. Uh, US firms operating in China in the securities business. And China's made steps in that direction to give majority ownership which we think is important, but not much has happened. That's now been thrust forward into the debate. So we're, we're optimistic in this, uh, I think, phase one is what uh, it's called, of this U.S.-China agreement that would include moving forward on the financial services. So again, that's very, that's very important as well. Does your industry take a position on, for example, some of the initiatives with respect to auditing of Chinese companies who trade their securities in the United States? As you know, there's a move afoot to say we really have to look at that because we can't rely upon the numbers we're getting out of China. You know, it's, it's something we haven't gotten directly involved in that. We certainly have watched the legislation that's unfolded that Senator Rubio and others have put forth. Uh, and it's something that are, you know, from a corporate finance perspective we're taking a look at, but we haven't weighed in at this point. Is it a risk to the industry, the securities industry, the possibility of sort of a disentanglement, as it were, of the capital markets in China and the United States? Well, I think we, I think there's I think we want to expand the you know the entanglement, if you will, of the capital markets between the two countries. And in fact, we would argue that it's to the benefit of the Chinese economy to have more uh, direct foreign investment and a broader capital market system. We think they're too bank dependent over there, and and that and for their own growth uh, benefits, they need a broader capital market system. Likewise, that benefits the broader global economy by having a you know a, a, a moving forward China. So we think there's a benefit of engagement. As you gather as an industry, this is your annual meeting, you all get together. Uh, do you talk about fundamental reform of the business in this sense? One of the issues, as you know, is women in the boardroom, women in management position in the securities industry, in Wall Street. Is it something that people talk about in the halls or on the stage? Absolutely. We had our diversity and inclusion council meeting yesterday, and this is something that the industry, from large to small, all different types of businesses, retail, institutional, are very very interested in. And, and, and I would argue that while there's a, a long 
long way to go for financial services. I think this is something that the financial services industry, even back when I was in the business a long time ago, has always been, it's always tried to be at the forefront of, of, of expanding, you know, not just not just who's in the boardroom, not just who the executives, the bankers, the, the brokers, who they are, but also looking at the client base and the changing demographic of America. And so it's something that the industry feels very strongly about. How do you make progress and how do you measure progress? So we've seen in some of the larger banks in New York now, some women really come into the more right. senior ranks. How do you measure that progress? Well, it, you have to look at it in many different ways, and we do this through working with our with our members. Is you know, it's not just a question of recruitment. I mean, the, probably the bigger question is retention. How do you, you know, re, re, everybody has very strong recruiting programs, but how do you retain uh, top talent and also achieve your, your goals of diversity and inclusion and then matriculate people along the way? And that's something where I think the firms, it's, it's, that's almost more important than the recruitment side of what they tell us. Finally, Ken, you're the executive director for SIFMA. As you walk away from this conference, what will be success for you? What do you want the people attending here to walk away with? Well, I think if people walk away and think I learned something that I didn't know uh, that I can take back, whether it's directly into my business from a you know from a from a markets perspective or from a policy perspective of something thinking about uh, or I or I learn something from my from my peers uh, sometimes competitors as well um, and that that uh, you know I think this is worthwhile I think I'm getting something out of being a member of this trade association that we would consider that a win.